Hello everyone, Dr. Data Science here to teach you data science methods and tools today, tomorrow, and beyond. In this video, we are going to answer a very important question. Why the area under the ROC curve for a random classifier is exactly 0.5? To answer this question, we're going to start with the definition of ROC curve. Then we're going to characterize the behavior of a random classifier and present mathematical proof that shows the behavior of the ROC curve for a random classifier. And third, we're gonna look at a very quick Python example that shows you that using only a single line of code, you can plot such ROC curves. We are gonna also have the link to the Google Cloud so that you can have access to the code that we have here. So please don't forget to look at the description below and feel free to like and subscribe. When we have binary classification, we have two classes or categories, negative and positive. Negative is negative one and positive is one that we can see here. A confusion matrix is, a, as you can see here for binary classification, is a two by two matrix where each row corresponds to the true label and each column corresponds to the predicted label. Therefore, we have four cases. The one on the very top left, that means that the original, the sample was originally negative and predicted as negative. So that's why we call it true negative. The same thing with the other term on the main diagonal, true positive, because it was positive and it is predicted as being positive. And then we have two types of error false positive and false negative. False positive means that it was actually negative but predicted to be positive. And the same thing with false negative. It means that it was positive but predicted to be negative. Given what we have here, we can define two quantities, true positive rate and false positive rate. So what is true positive rate? It is the ratio of true positive to the, all the elements that we have in the row that is labeled one. So that would be true positive plus false negative. On the other hand, we have false positive rate, which is false positive, where we have here, over true negative plus false positive, meaning whatever we have in this first row of this matrix. And therefore, what happens is that you want to have your true positive rate to be as close as possible to one, because then it means that false negative is very small. And similarly, for false positive rate, you want this quantity to be close to zero because you don't want to have false positives. So these quantities, in some sense, they measure the number of false positives and false negatives. An ROC curve plots the true positive rate as a function of false positive rate. Therefore, it is better to be on this top left corner where true positive rate is close to one and false positive rate is close to zero. So to show you, so this is where we really like to be because in this case, true positive rate is close to one and false positive rate is close to zero. But then the question is, why for a random classifier, we have this diagonal 45 degree line that shows the trade-off between true positive rate and false positive rate. So we're gonna prove this in the next slide. In order to solve this problem, we have to make two assumptions. Let's say we have n data points or samples. And let's say a fraction of these are positive cases, which I show this by x. So x is a number between 0 and 1. If we have a balanced case, this x should be 0.5, meaning that half of cases are positives and the other half are uh, half is negative. And then also we have to make an assumption about the classifier. So let's say this classifier randomly assigns positive uh, labels with probability rho. And this probability, again, using the three axioms of probability, you know that it should be non-negative. It should be between zero and one. And so we show this probability using rho. So to just recap here, x is the fraction of positive cases and rho is the probability that the classifier predicts uh, the label as being positive. 
With these two missing main assumptions in mind, now we can go uh, to the next slide where we find all these four quantities, true positive, false negative, true negative, and false positive. So let's think about the first one, which is true positive. So true positive means that we want to find the number of cases that they were actually positive samples times the probability that the classifier predicts positive. So in this case, we have x times n, so that's the number of positive cases, times the probability that the classifier predicts something positive, which is rho. And this gives us this xn rho. For false negative, remember, this means that these were the samples that they were positive, but they actually predicted as being negative. So we have this x times n, because we have x times n positive samples, but now we have to multiply this by the probability that the classifier predicts negative, and that's going to be 1 minus rho. And we can do the same strategy to find true negative. So true negative mean, meaning that we need to look at the negative samples, which is 1 minus x times n. So these are the, all the negative cases. And then the probability that the classifier predicts something negative is 1 minus rho. And then finally, for the last quantity, false positives, meaning that we working with negative samples that they are predicted as being positive. And that would be 1 minus x n times rho. And now you have everything you need to find true positive rate and false positive rate. As you can see here, we have the ratios. And if we plug in these values for true positive, false negative, false positive, and true negative, um, in, in, in the first case, the, the denominator would be x times n because rho and 1 minus rho, if we add them, we get 1. So we can always factor x times n, and then we add rho plus 1 minus rho, which would be 1. And you can see that the true positive rate is rho, and also the same thing with false positive rate. If we plug in these values, you can see that now we have 1 minus x times n in the denominator. And then if we cancel these, we still end up with rho. So what this means is that if you have a classifier that predicts positive classes with probability rho, regardless of the distribution of the original data, always we get true positive and false positive as being equal and the value is exactly rho, where rho changes from 0 to 1. And that's where we get the 45 degree line that you saw before. In the next slide, we're going to see how we can actually plot our OC curve using a single line of code. Let's create a synthetic example. I start by importing NumPy, Matplotlib. Also, I use Makeblobs to uh, create the synthetic data that you can see here. Uh, I'm using train test split to divide the data into two sets. I'm using a logistic regression classifier. The part that is really important for us is actually this part from sklearn.metrics import ROC curve display. So this is a, a built-in method that plots the ROC curve for us as we are going to see in the next slide. So to be clear, one thing that you need to do, first you need to have a classifier, which we are using here logistic regression, which we create an instance of this, uh, uh, of this uh, class. And then we use the dot fit method to do the training. I usually like to have nice plots. So I usually like to update the font size, the figure size. So this is a very nice piece of code that you can use. And then here is the magic ROC curve display dot from estimator. So meaning that you want to create an ROC curve using the estimator. You pass the classifier, which is already been trained and your test data. And this gives you this blue curve here, which is the ROC curve for the logistic regression. You can also look at the area under curve or AUC, which is 0.92. So always see better than 0.5. And then finally, we're going to plot the 45 degree line for the random classifier. And because the area under this is half of the area of this square. So this means that now we have 0.5 times one, which gives us 0.5. I hope you find this video helpful and please don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you.